There's your upgrade. Get started. Really, you're just going to sit there and buzz away with your fans. Okay, fine. I'll do it. So yes, for this upgrade, we're going to be doing a Gigabyte Z490 Vision D, a Core i7 10th Gen 10700K. Uh, let's see here. I'm reusing my original RAM, so I stole 32 gigs out of the uh, server for the time being because it has a total of 64 of this. So I grabbed 32 for testing. I'm also cooling it with a Noctua NHU12S because I'm not going for massive overclocking here. Remember, this is a server. I need it stable. I might see if I can get a slight overclock out of it, depending upon what the thermals do, but it should help a little bit because I'm also using a Thermal Grizzly um, Carbonaut pad, and I love these things. So I'm going to go ahead and get this put together and steal the power supply out of my gaming computer, which is underneath the desk here because I don't have enough power supplies to play with right now. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the build because you can see that over on anyone else's videos. So let me get this built up real quick and uh, power it up and we'll go from there. Oops, I forgot one thing. The obligatory peel. Everyone freaking loves this for some reason. I can't wait to get this crap off. The only thing is, where the heck am I going to get it from? I cut my nails and I can't grab it. Ugh. Was that not very graceful? There you go. Is that nice and slower? Is that like some crazy ASMR stuff? Oh, I missed a piece. The horror. Okay, let me build it now. So, after one day and one random live stream on YouTube and playing around with it some more, I got it built. Um, I added on a second fan. I had this extra Noctua Redux fan. So, this way, instead of just being push, it's push-pull. And that definitely helped the thermal some. I got the temporary drive sitting in here for right now for testing and my RAM. I got everything running beautifully on here at 4.9 gigahertz, which is a respectable overclock for the 10700K, considering it's on air. It's not even on water. So let's go up to the screen here. And by the way, if we focus back here, hopefully we can see that, yeah, we're idling at 30 watts roughly that's where it idles at so that's not bad at all so let's bring up the screen here first I'm gonna refocus here a little bit and you can see it's already peaked out when it booted up at 4.9 gigahertz right now it's idling at 900 it's bounced around a little bit but uh, that's my idle voltage at 700 millivolts so let's do a quick Cinebench and see what we come up with. Now, mind you, this Cinebench is not going to be like cheating. I'm not going to be running in administrator mode or real time mode. This is just regular mode. And let's see what I get off of this. So there we go 5130. I was getting 5144. There is a little bit of flux, but. Considering I think the stock was like 4,900 and I'm moving from a 7,700K, which is actually 2,420, this is a hefty jump. So I absolutely love it. So let's stop here and go to the actual swap out and do the build now. Okay, Thanos, time for you to go to sleep because it's time to do some surgery. Okay, so before we pull this off the wall, let's lose about 20 pounds to get these hard drives out of here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, now let's get the uh, cables on the bottom of the case off. And finally, two screws that get it onto the rack. And I'm sure you're still heavy as ever. Uh, not as bad without the hard drives.
by 7th gen Intel. Okay, so let's get some cables disconnected here first. The front panel connectors. A little buzzer. Come on. Tricky clip. SAS connectors. Mm, front fan wall. 24 pin ATX. 8 pin auxiliary. Let's see if I can get those out of the way somehow. Stay there. Stay. Now let's take off my USB C, which has my Unraid boot drive right there. Let's get the RAM out of here because that's going to go in the new motherboard. Okay, let's get both of these cards out now. I absolutely love this P3700. It's worked great since I did that video about a month ago. Even with it being in a server case, it's always good to put a 40 millimeter fan on these uh, SAS HBA cards. It definitely helps them run cooler and you have less chances of it throttling when it overheats and you're doing a lot of data writes like during a parity run. So it keeps your speeds a lot more steady. There we go. Oh, need that too. That's for the keyboard. And now it's out. Give me that screw. There we go. Take out the I.O. plate. And the other thing I need off this old motherboard is my one terabyte backup drive and also used for surveillance video. Okay, and yeah, that's all I need from this board. This board is now empty, so let's get this off to the side. Here's a new bad boy right here. Before we put it in, I want to put the extra RAM in, and I want to move that M.2 over into this first slot. So, let's get the RAM. I do like the fact that on these Gigabyte boards with these little covers, one, you got to peel off the cover for their thermal transfer, but at the same time, the screws are locked on so they don't fall off, which is great. And my Sabrent one terabyte drive that I used to use for my cache, but now I am using for um, backup of my app data and also for video surveillance recording. And this is the TLC version, not the QLC. I would not use the QLC version for cache at all, period. But since I upgraded to the P3700, I gave this a new lease on life. And I still have two more M.2 slots for future expansion. So, with all that done, let's go ahead and put it in the motherboard. I don't have to worry about an I.O. plate because nowadays everything is built on, which is, I freaking love it. God, this thing's heavy. This heat sink's heavy. That's what it is. Okay, that should be enough to at least hold the board in place. Now, my question is, with this Noctua heat sink, it sits about 4 or 5 millimeters higher than my Arctic 33 that was on my old 7th gen. Will it still clear? And it's going to be really close. I'm not sure. Oh, let me get these wires out of the way. That's not going to be a very good test because that's definitely hitting. It's right there, but it closes and it's sealed. So we should be okay, but that's really pushing the limit right there in height wise. So it does work. Especially considering the way they pinched off these tubes. This one looks like about one millimeter higher than the rest. So there's a little bit of variance when they close off these uh, heat pipes. So just keep that in mind. But 
there has to be like literally only a millimeter of diff of uh, space between the top of this heat tube and the cover. But it works. So let's put the rest of the screws in. Now give me a minute, I gotta do the uh, front panel header. Okay, so I got the Super Micro front panel connector adapter wired into the connector for the motherboard. And this is actually pretty cool. I've never seen this before. It actually clips in all your little clips and then you can actually plug the whole thing into the motherboard, which makes it so much easier. So this goes in this way. And plugs them all in in one shot right there. And let's plug it into the front panel for Super Micro. There we go. And I will have to tuck that away there in a minute and do some cable management. Now for some power cables. Cool. Let me do some cable management here for a few minutes and uh, I think we're almost ready to start it up. Okay, so I got the server remounted, hard drives back in. All we have to do now is give it some power. So let me crawl underneath there, get some power, and it should auto turn on. And I had to borrow one of my screens from my editing computer because I don't have any more screens that support HDMI. My old motherboard had DVI, and this is HDMI, so yeah. Yes, I know, we gotta fix that. There is no NCT 6775. That was the uh, monitoring chip on the old motherboard. I gotta switch it over for the IT87. But yes, she is fully booted up, works out beautifully. So there's only, let's put the case front cover on. And there's one other little thing I wanna do first, and then this video is done. Okay, let's uh, put the panel cover on and quieten this up and get these fan walls to actually suck some air through the hard drives, because now they're working. So the first one is a Noctua case badge. And in all my years, this one is actual pure metal. This thing is heavy. So let's put that one on. There we go. And right below it, the i7 10th gen. Hey, get on there straight. There we go. And that complements nicely with the other side with the Unraid badge. So, thank you very much. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. Any comments, down below. And I'll see you next time.